Okay, so let's look at a couple examples of using a while loop. Let's suppose we want to get the sum of numbers within a range starting with a low value. Uh, in this case, my low value is going to be 5 by default, and my high value is 35. So I want to get all the numbers summed up between 5 and 35, inclusive of those numbers. So 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8, all the way up to plus 35. I'm going to display those numbers here in a list box. So all the numbers are going to be listed there. And then my total, or the sum of those numbers, will be listed here in this yellow text box named TXT sum. And it's all going to occur when I click on this button called btn get sum. So let's look at the code for the button. I have here four variables that are going to contain an integer. Low is going to be my low number. High is going to be the high number of the range. Sum will be the total of all the numbers between those, including those numbers. And current is going to be a counter that I'm going to use in the loop to keep track of each number as I add it to that total. I'm going to take the text that's in the text box named txt low, convert that to a numeric value and convert it to an integer and assign it to my variable named low. I'm going to do the same for txt high, convert that text into an integer, assign it to my high variable. We'll set sum equal to zero uh, initially. My current variable will take on the value of low to start with. Then I'm going to clear all the items in my list box named LST range values. And then here is my while loop. The loop is going to execute as long as the value of current is less than or equal to the variable high. And each time through the loop, I am going to add whatever the current value is as a string with no decimal places, and the N0 will also put commas in between the thousands and hundreds place. And I'm going to pat it to the left in a column of eight characters so that's right aligned. Then I'm going to add the value of current to the total of sum. I'm incrementing sum by current, and then I'm going to increment current by one. That hits the end of my loop, and it's going to continue looping around until current is greater than the value of high, where I've gone outside that specified range. Now, if I didn't put this current plus equals 1 here, current would never change values. And we would be in what's called a continuous loop. And eventually, sum would get to a value that's outside the range of an integer and our, would get an error and the application would crash. Once, however, I've hit current being greater than high, I'm then going to display in our text box named txt sum the value of sum converted to a string with no decimal places and again showing the commas. Let's watch this run. So I'm getting the value between 5 and 35. I'm going to click get sum of numbers in range. In the list box are all the numbers between 5 and 35, and then down here is my total. Let me do a little smaller range so you can actually see this work a little bit easier. So 5, 6, and 7. 5 plus 6 plus 7 is a value of 18. I want to know what the values are between 1 and 500. So there's all my values going from 1 to 500 and our total is 125,250. Here is that same application done in C Sharp. Same control, same interface. Let's just take a look at the code for our button. And once again, I have four variables that are type integer. Low, high, sum, and current. We're going to set low equal to the numeric value of txt low. And high to the integer value of txt high. Sum starts out the value of zero. And current is equal to whatever value low is. We're going to clear the items in the list box. And then here again is our while loop that executes as long as current is less than or equal to high. And each time through the loop, we're going to add our value of current converted to a string with no decimal places and showing commas in a column of eight characters and padding to the left so it will be right aligned. I'm going to increment sum by the value of current, and then I'm going to increment current by one. When current is, the, is greater than the value of high, it's going to kick out of the loop and continue with executing with the statement after the loop. 
which is we're going to place the value of sum in our text box named txt sum. Let's watch this operate. So again, 5 through 35, I get a value of 620. If I want to see the range from uh, 1 to 10, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 gives me a total of 55 if I add those numbers up. If I put in 10,000 and click get some numbers, now we're going from 1 to 10,000. You can see it took about uh, maybe four seconds for it to calculate that, display all 10,000 numbers, and my total is 50,005,000. So you can see the loops execute very, very fast. It had to go through that loop 10,000 times in about four seconds. Well, here's another example. This one's also done in VB. And uh, you're familiar working with word processors such as Microsoft Word, where we can actually have it count how many words are in a document. In this case, I've got a text box that's set to multi-line uh, value being true. The multi-line property is true. And I've pasted in the Gettysburg address. And I want to know how many words are in the Gettysburg address. So I created a button called Get Word Count that will actually go through and count the number of spaces. And from there, we can basically figure out that's the number of words plus one because each space or the first space would be after the first word. And I'm going to display that word count down here in this label called LBL count. Well, here's our code. I have two variables, i and words as integer, and a string variable called article, which is going to be the text of my text box containing the Gettysburg address or whatever I type in there. And I'm going to trim it. It's going to get rid of all the spaces before or after the text. So any preceding spaces, any trailing spaces. I'm going to set i equal to 0. i is going to be a uh, counter that we're going to use in looking for each of the spaces. Words is going to keep track of the number of words. So it's, it's basically, again, a counter as well. And then here's my do while loop. While the index of article is equal to a space. So every time it finds a space, that's going to give me the location in that text, text box. And I'm going to start with the value of i. So I'm going to start with the very first character, 0. And as long as this is returning a value of something other than minus 1, so it does not equal to minus 1, then I'm going to get the value of i, the location of that space. I'm going to add 1 to it. So let's say our fourth character was a space. i is now going to be equal to uh, 5. Actually, be equal to 4 because the fourth character would be 3, which is our counting with 0, and 1 would be 4. And I'm going to increment words. So now the next time through the loop, as it's looking for the next space, it's going to start at character index 4 which is going to be the fifth character, and find the next space. And it's continued going through the loop until it's found all the spaces. Once it no longer finds a space, I'm going to display our word count, the phrase word count, and the number of words. I'm going to add one to it to compensate for that first word, convert that value to a string. So let's run this. So my word count is 267. Now, if I add a couple trailing space or a couple preceding spaces here, my word count is still 267. It ignored those spaces. But if we had somebody who was using the old style of typing in documents and putting in two spaces between sentences, that's going to add to our word count. But really, we didn't add words. All we did was add spaces. So we need a way to compensate for that. So I'm going to paste in a little more code here into my program, which is another while loop. I have a variable called n, which is an integer. And I'm going to look for, in this case, two spaces within my article. And if I'm finding two spaces, I'm going to note the location where those two spaces start. That'll be the first space of that grouping. And then I'm going to, in my variable article, remove one of those spaces. I'm going to do that by getting all the characters in front of the first space, and then all the characters with the second space and anything after that. And that will eliminate the first space. 
I'm going to continue doing that to the loop until there are no two double spaces together. So that's how we can eliminate double spacing within a document. Let's watch this run. So I get a word count of 267. And again, I'm going to put in some spaces. In fact, let's put a whole bunch of them in here. And I'll put a few spaces there and a few more here. So I've added a bunch of spaces, which should bring our word count back up um, in the old way we had done this. But it still shows a word count of 267. So it ignored those additional spaces by eliminating them in our variable called article. So here's that same application done in C Sharp, same interface. Let's get the word count, and double click on that, and here's my code. So my code is I've got two variables, i and words, which are integers. I'm going to have a string variable called article, which is going to equal txt article.txt, and I'm trimming off the preceding and trailing spaces from that. I is going to be equal to zero, words is equal to zero, and then here's my while loop that as long as it keeps finding a space starting with some value, starting with some character, in this case it's going to start with the very first character, index zero, and as long as that is not equal to a minus one, minus one means it didn't find what we're looking for. So as long as that's not equal, we're going to find the location, which is going to be I, and I'm going to add one to it, loading it up for the next time it goes through the loop to start looking at the character after that. And each time then through the loop, we're going to increment words by one. So we'll run this. And again, we get 267. But as before, if I add a couple spaces in here, that's going to bring my word count up, even though I didn't actually add words. So I'm going to fix that problem of counting the double spaces or multiple spaces by adding in another while loop. We're going to have a variable called n, which is an integer. And then I'm going to look for, in this case, two spaces together. So that's a, inside the quotes is a space space. And as long as that does not equal minus 1, I'm going to get the location of that first space. And then I'm going to remove it from my article variable by using substring. So I'm getting, first of all, the characters from the beginning of the article variable to that first space, and then all the characters from that second space to the end. And that will remove the first character. So let's try this. So we had 267 before. If I put in a bunch of spaces, or just simply add a couple spaces in between sentences, which would probably be more likely the case. I'll add a bunch more here just so you can see this work. I'm going to click Get Word Count, and again, we're still at 267. It ignored all those multiple spaces and counted them just as one. So there we're using two while loops to accomplish that in a much better way than with just one.